Okay, well, good to have it back. This, now we're on the second hour of a two-hour piece. The other, the uh, first part aired last Thursday, and it's intermingled with a rerunning of an interview I had done with Muammar Gaddafi back in 1991, laying his system out, which I'm of the opinion he's ahead of history's curve. Even no matter what happens, uh, that is something that he set up. He's come up with an idea that is like the United States of America had a new, even if they had beaten us, they had come up with a new idea in keeping with history. Mm -hmm. He's come up with a, an idea about how we're going to form capital, how we're going to set up a world economy, and so ahead of history's curve. And no matter how much we burn and kill his grandchildren or anything else, that idea is still going to be there, even if he's not. But he's done that, and he ought to be celebrated the man yes. Muammar Gaddafi, rather than uh, vi violated as he's being done. And we're here with Coley Clark uh, on a second part of uh, programming taped on this day, the 26th of uh, May. This will air uh, in June 7th. And uh, we're talking about this. She's a Green Party candidate from uh, for the state, uh, for the United States Senate from the state of New York, did well in the last election, and a good friend of uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, Cynthia McKinney, yes. who had run for president on that part, and we're talking about that, and we were ending by showing footage of uh, her uh, talking from Libya, where we had just killed his grandchildren and have predators aimed at killing the man now as a war crime. And um, maybe you could pipe in. Yeah, I, mean, I think, think the excuse of it, it's just really, it's really, I mean, it terrifies me. And, you know, I've already said that I think Obama, our President Obama, should be tried for war crimes. Okay, I can and see. And all, his, his, all of his party should be tried for that war, Rice, war crimes. That Miss Rice, Susan Rice. The and, whole crew, I mean, bring mm -hmm, them all up mm -hmm. and try, try, try them for war crimes. Because we're not talking about bumming Gaddafi. Mm -hmm. Gaddafi is a man. Mm -hmm. Libya is a major metropolis with two million people in it. Tripoli. Tripoli, Tripoli. yeah, I mean, yeah. Yes, right. with two Tripoli. million people in it. Mm -hmm. Libya has six million. Uh -huh. And if you're talking about bombing Tripoli, mm -hmm. that's tantamount to bombing Atlanta all day long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or just, uh, let's say, World Trade Center, 9-11 uh, here, we did that. Suppose the bombs are going to, tomorrow they're going to fall on... Uh, they're going to fall on Madison Square Garden, and the next day they'll fall on Lincoln Center, and the next yes, day they'll fall. Yes, yeah, yes, they can just yes. destroy it in and order to and do it's, it's it. A, just it's ramp, about, ramp, ramp it. But it's about mass killing. Yeah, it's mass killing. Well, Obama knows as well as I do that if you drop bombs on a populated city mm -hmm. with two million people in it, you're going to kill civilians. You're going to kill numerous civilians. Mm -hmm. And so it's not about military targets. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. just bombing indiscriminately except for Qaddafi's compound, which they love to focus on. Well, it they would claim, they, they would try to claim in terms of UN mandate and everything, they're trying to break up his infrastructure so he can't go and kill the people in Benghazi. Well, and they've, mean, put their, they've, they've opted for a side in the civil war that they, has emerged. And again, scoring those people who came to attack him uh, in the initial stage out of Benghazi, that Sanusi back thing, they did not come, we said it in the other program, we say it again, they didn't, or maybe I even said it at the beginning here, they didn't come as uh, peaceful marchers like Freedom Riders in Mississippi in 62. No, no, but we are going to do Freedom Riders or, and do riots or, in Libya. Okay. Yeah, I think so, there might be. But, now, we're but, doing that, I mean, Cynthia is a part of that. Yeah, 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 but, the, but the, the people from Benghazi weren't of that way, or peacefully marching through the Times Square or something, they were coming with weapons. Weapons which had been supplied mainly by, or, or in large measure by the CIA, yes. as an undercover thing to overthrow a regime that they wanted to over, overthrow because he may be, and the, the thing we're trying to argue for here on this program is it's not only just imperialism. They're going to seize all those mm -hmm. oils south mm -hmm. of, uh, mm -hmm. uh, those oil resources south of Benghazi or that kind of thing, or some people are... Uh, and the major river that supplies mass best... Yeah, man-made river kind of they've done. Yeah, they got that. But, but that is, it's not only just that, but it, it, the reason they want to do it it, it would be the same reason that the British came and bombed Washington in 1812 or fought against our revolution, against their order, their monarchy and so forth, mm -hmm. is that their claim to legitimacy, the United States' claim to being legitimate, we are Hercules, we stand for history, we are on the side of good 
progress for all humanity and that sort of thing is being undercut by internal contradictions within this country. We are now at coming to the end of what are, we're going to be able to expand our power. We have great power and it's very dangerous for that reason. The most dangerous country in the world is the United States without a vision that yes. can do anything that can serve the interests of the least advantaged people within the national society or within the international society. They never care about that. They only are getting a thing where they can cotton on or, 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 or cozy up to the ones who are already rich, as always they have done, in order to get more and more for those who already have m most of everything and not care at all about the least among us. And that's the, that's the, the, the system that he came up with which dealt with the Africans, the American Indian peoples, a lot of the black people have been put in slavery, he's done things for Africa, and you can't have anybody who's really concerned or setting up a system that serves the least advantage. Yeah, but you see, that's what you must bomb. That's what I'm trying to you tell you. You gotta bomb the new economic idea. Mm -hmm. You bomb the fact At that the he has done in Libya what we said we would do in the USA. Mm -hmm. He has free health care. Mm -hmm. He has universal education. Everybody getting education through a PhD. That's right. Medical degrees or whatever you want. Mm -hmm. He has gone and, and, and freed women. He's not fighting women's legislation as we are doing in the United States mm -hmm. with the abortion issue. Mm -hmm. This man is, is, is free. People are now free to be human, uh -huh. to live. In, 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 a, in, a, in a brief 30 years. Yes, sir. They were the poorest people in the world. Yes, and they, brief and what years. they've achieved in 20 years in terms of spreading it around is absolutely phenomenal. But he's gone further, Harold. The man has said, look. But it's at a level of move, ideology. We've got to move mm -hmm. to a gold standard. Well, that's another issue that's there. And if there. they move to a gold standard, mm -hmm. that will wreck the rest Western economies. Mm -hmm. These rich characters we're talking about mm -hmm. have a new way of looking at life. That's right. Because they've got to pay for what they get. Uh -huh. Because Africa's got the gold. Uh -huh. The dollar has got the gold. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So the move toward the gold standard, um, not only the move toward the gold standard, but also organizing African African investment Bank banks. System. They've the got their, banks. their sovereign funds have been largely inv invested in trying to get, he's behind the idea of trying to bring a unity to the African people That's to right. serve the least advantage. That's right. He is very well liked, we should understand. And, and, he and, is and, very well liked by the people. That's the correct. everyday run of the mill people in Africa, like Gaddafi, he's seen as somebody who is concerned with them. But tomorrow, when the American Congress meet to talk about this War Powers Act, mm -hmm. they should be very clear that the world understands that they bombed 913 black Africans mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. were migrants mm -hmm. in Libya trying mm -hmm. to get away to Europe. Mm -hmm. NATO actually stood there and bombed them in the, in the harbor. Bombed yeah, right them. in the harbor. They in those bombed, them, yeah, bombed, yeah. Them, bombed them, bombed yeah, them, bombed them. Another ship bombed them, about 169 people on it, right. black Africans. Mm -hmm. the, 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 we opened up with this, the, 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 this, this, this renegade group calling itself a, 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 a revolutionary force. I yeah. uh, want to replace Gaddafi and, 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 and bring democracy to Libya. Mm. We opened up with them in Lentro. Mm. Who are the Lenten? Mm. Anything black they can find. Mm. Black people have to hide out in Libya. Mm. So what we are looking at is a government, our mm. government. Mm -hmm. Well, our president said the noose is tightening around Gaddafi. Mm -hmm. Our mm. president, mm -hmm. out of the mouth of a black man, uh -huh. Uh -huh. who obviously had no connections to the African experience in the United States, right. or those words would never come out of your mouth, uh -huh. because you would know that mm -hmm. that was your history. Well, I don't think they have, I don't know, the story we're getting, we're being given such propaganda, and it's like an ad campaign where you're going to really vilify the other persons, or, so they've done that, and they're going to have a very hard time owning up for what they've done in the fact that they are attacking them in an imperialist way. And so they are going to have a hard time backing down from that. Well, we have, but that War Powers Act that we were talking about actually was yeah. Friday of last week. I'm thinking. This yeah, week. last week. No, it's yes, still Friday active. Friday of last week. Dennis Kucinich but, has said yeah, that well, the Kucinich president. Kucinich is saying he must be impeached. And I'm with Kucinich. We must impeach him mm -hmm. and we must try him. Well, I mean, not just him. Now I'm talking about this administration. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about that administration. If we can bring one administration to trial, then maybe we can get the other a Bush. Mm -hmm. Because it's all about these men 
And if you look at the world picture this morning, I turned on, I, I'm scared to turn on the TV. <laughs> yes, I know. To yeah. look at Channel Zero, mm. the dumb news. Mm. But I do get the dumb news sometimes. So I turned the it on this news? morning, the dumb news. What's that? Corporate news. Oh, oh, the dumb news. Okay. The dumb news. I don't yeah, ever yeah. know what yeah. they're selling. Yeah, me. yeah, it's propaganda. I, I know they're lying about this. Yeah, yeah. And I can tell you, it would, having worked as a press person with the Jackson, Mississippi advocate years ago yeah. as its first editor, uh -huh. all the things that I found interesting was a just lie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. We would see yeah. one thing. Mm -hmm. And know that it happened. There was an incident mm -hmm. where America actually, where America, United States uh, uh, government actually came into a little small town, mm -hmm. Gallman, Mississippi. Yeah. Before day in the morning, with mm -hmm. army tanks, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with squad teams, mm -hmm. and helicopters, and all this stuff. It was absolutely silent. Mm -hmm. And. They put out the story that there was hiding in this little town, this great revolutionary force, mm -hmm. and that the children were out marching every day. The young people were marching, soldiers were marching around training and mm -hmm. da, da, da. And they had the M-115s and all these big guns mm -hmm. and stuff. This was back in 1981. Yeah. The thing about it was such a, I didn't even believe the lie, but every press in the state of Mississippi, every news channel you turned on, and most of them had black anchors, yeah. was sitting there reporting this lie. Yeah, 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 right. Well, that's what's going on now. Because what was in the house was 15 people, 12 of whom were children. Mm -hmm. The oldest child was 12. Mm -hmm. And so it was a 12-year-old, a 10-year-old, an 8-year-old, and everything else was 5 and under, mm -hmm. down to a set of twins who yeah. were two and a baby with nine months. Uh -huh. and, but they had people on who were saying, yeah, every day they'd be out there marching up and down the road out here. Remember, this is out in the backwoods of Mississippi. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they'd ride up here every day. Mm. They're marching around, practicing with them guns. Mm. They'd be marching mm. and talking about this. <laughs> yeah, right. And so we, we, yeah. the advocate actually put those, you know, those twins, cute as they could be little girls, yeah. on the front page. Yeah. Terrorist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You put yeah, on the yeah. front page, terrorist, a yeah. little nine month old baby. Yeah, right. Up there right. Yeah. Looking at the guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, lie. Yeah. But, but, but the American the government. The big lie. That's what Gorbel said. Lie right, big. But, yeah. but the American government actually orchestrated this lie. Yeah, right. So I know they lie. Yeah. And so what I'm saying is, is that. When I turn on dumb news and I see that America saying, well, we got to get Americans out of Yemen. Mm -hmm. Yemen is at war now with itself. Mm -hmm. uh, Bahrain's at war with itself. Mm -hmm. Syria's at war with itself. Mm -hmm. uh, all of North Africa's at war with itself. Mm -hmm. And then you look farther east in Afghanistan, Pakistan, mm -hmm. Iraq. I mean, just name mm -hmm. it. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. We have uh, uh, the American government. Mm -hmm. The American government will be held accountable well, for our uh, deeds. And we have spread this across the world, but the American people have to understand this blood is on our hands. Mm -hmm. Now, this is you and me we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I remember. We, I don't get, kill people. Yeah, we're trying to get a get teaching thing going. I remember getting a teaching thing going about the Vietnam thing. Remember yeah, Vietnam? Yeah, I remember the Vietnam. We were there, and there was everybody saying, well, I'm getting on with my life. I don't know, but then it got busy, and it got busy because they were out, uh, they were in a wrong war and so forth, and the same thing is going to be taking place here, one would hope. But this is the hope we've got Thank to God do it. I remember taking 500 people on Mother's Day Teaching. to Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. with Dagmar Wilson from the United Nations mm -hmm. and, and those folk. Uh, but my whole point was to bring black women, brown women, red women, and yellow women to Washington. We did that, uh -huh. mostly black women. And they came from across the country. Fanny right. Hamer couldn't make it. Sent a God bless wonderful her, yeah. telegram. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because her, her child was dying, the little girl that she'd adopted. Yeah. But we went there to make a message. And right. people said, Why Mother's Day? I said, Mother's Day, they bombed the bus at Birmingham. That's right. At Anderson, Alabama. Poor That's the day bit. we want to show up. Yeah. Bomb the building. So we yeah. want to make clear yeah. that the message is here is that, and we're still going to Libya with the Freedom Ride. Cynthia's mm -hmm. in, but it's small, cool people. Good. But we're yeah. still working That's on We're still raising money and trying to get yeah, the funds. Right, up. right. Got, I need funds, folks, but a yeah. small group of funds, mm. amount of funds raised. But Freedom to Ride to Libya. That's a good yeah, idea. Yeah, we got to go yeah. to Libya. We have yeah. to put Americans there on that front line in a way in which people can begin to see us coming in waves. Mm -hmm. And people from Africa, I talked with the brother that's running for the president of. Mali a couple yeah, of days, that's right, you did. Yeah. days ago. Yeah, right, I remember, uh, yeah. Wanted us to come into Mali mm -hmm. uh, and to begin to talk about building new relationships here. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh, and helping to build some communities and some American presence, uh, especially black folk, because we've got a lot of whites who go into Africa. Well, black the, folk can't afford it. The people that would be in support of Muammar Gaddafi would be, many of them would have been people who were slaves, for crying Amen, out loud. Amen, yes. 
you know, people not not your 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 you know your bread to the you know manor kind of people who were all well ensconced in the old order. It was people who were disadvantaged. The American Indian peoples, all right. and both hemispheres, yes. were treated abysmally. Every yes. single treaty we made with them, they were uh, uh, was uh, was uh, violated. Oh, uh, nothing was kept. We stole their land. We put them on reservations. We did that. And we did that because we had the power to do it. We had the power. We were the strength. We could do it. The European could do it. But the, uh, And the same after Pizarro in the Southern Hemisphere. It was there. Uh, India, you had a Raj. You had a thing. If you had the Gatling gun, you could assert yourself militarily, yes. conquer people, colonize them. It was called colonization, <laughs> 500 te te years. Terrorization should have been the campaign. It still terrorizes black people in this country. It's still, still true. So those are the people honest, across yeah. the world, the American across Indian the people, the, the African people. They came from all over, from Australia. They came from Asia. Mm -hmm. They came from Africa. And they came from the Western world. And the, Af yes. and the people that are in support of, uh, the people that are going to be in support of, uh, understood, appropriately so, of Muammar Gaddafi's uh, uh, Jamaharia. Yes is not listening to the propaganda that he's a tyrant or any of that. They're not listening to the CIA-backed uh, uh, grab for money or something. For, it could be basis of what's coming out of Benghazi or something like that. They're listening, they're listening to the people who see that he was somebody who was setting up a system that benefited the least among us rather than only the rich and powerful. And that's something that seems not to be able to... I've got a thing. Let me show you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me show you this. Let me practice. show you this. Let me show you something. Here, let me show you something, okay? Right. This is the world. Josh, when you can come in, on, we showed this on the program with Nat the other week and everything, but this is a chart of the world wealth. Now, what I want you to see is that this is in the 20, can you describe it? It's the 20 percentiles, yeah, right, from and, the and, top. And I'm looking at, look at the top of now, this. And look at the, the isn't there a chart? Glass, at the champagne glass where the champagne is. And do you read the chart, how much is owned by the upper 20% of goodness. the world? Now, do you the see? The richest 20% owns 82.70% of the world's resources. And the richest, uh, the 20% with that included, is 97%? Yes. 97% of the wealth is owned by them, and actually it's closer to 5% in real terms. And then you see what there is for the rest of the people. We add everybody else together, we might get 8 to no, we might get 6% down here, because I don't want to, I want to, ignore, I want to ignore the second part. So we got 2, 3, that's 5, about 5 to 6% of, our, of the, the rest of the world. Let me show you another Which chart. Which is the majority of the world's population. Yeah, that, this is the wealth, and this is the poor. Uh, this is 1.4. 2007. Yeah. Okay, now this is 2007. Now here's one that comes after Reagan. This is the growth in the income of people in the various percentiles. And can you address this for me, uh, Coley? Here, you got a chart here. This is the wealthiest, wealthiest, and so forth. Oh, so if, if we look at here, you can't even see the poor on this chart. That little line is so Well, it's cool. negative. Six to, it's yeah, negative. That's right. It's, it's negative. It's so, Everywhere except there. And here so is... So you got 13, the, the, the middle class is about $38,100. So, but we're looking at a, a, a chart where the top 1% owns 740900 dollars out of eight hundred. No, this 000. is the growth in their income. Yes. This is the status of what went with the people that were on the yes. lower part. Okay. Have we got that one down? We got that one down. You see, it's all owned by these people. That's and right. you notice they're all getting richer. That's right. They, 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 they trash the economy. And the poor is going the, to negative. You can't even see us. Okay, here's and one last one. Just one about little chart. One, show, one other little chart. Here's another chart, okay, that shows uh, this, is, is this the income. Uh, the the blue, blue is the upper, the upper class. Yeah. These are the people that people want to be in touch with because they got all this money. And they're getting all more money, right. okay? And you get down here, you get down here. Can't this, find the poor. Th this Can't one, do you see poor. this tiny little line? This yes. is the bottom 20%? Yes. Do you see that? You can, can hardly see it. You can't see it. It is down there, there. You need glasses. Now that's going to be a <laughs> lot of... How about a microscope? That's going to be the people at the bottom. That's going to be the lower 20 percentile. It's, you can't even see it. It is so small what's going on. And this is the up. These are the people that the interests of the political system du jour, the political system that calls itself legitimate, is serving. 
It's not serving the people, the masses. Nothing is serving Never the has. masses. Never has. But you know okay. what? That, but that's how we need One to One last this. thing, yes. okay? One last thing. Colonel, I mean, <clears throat> Lord John Maynard Keynes had a letter to He was the great person to set up the whole economic order coming out of the Depression here in this country and the world. And uh, second, after the Second World War, the institution, major institutions that formed the international order. And here, can you read it for me, Coley? Okay. This is a letter he wrote in 1930 to his grandchildren, to our grandchildren in their maturity. That would be about Economic now. Economic possibilities for our grandchildren. 1930, ladies and gentlemen. We are being afflicted with a new disease of which some readers may not yet have heard the name but of which they will hear a great deal of in the years to come, namely, technological unemployment. This means unemployment due to our discovery of means of economizing the use of labor, outrunning the paces which we can find new uses of labor. This means that the economic problem is not, if we look into the future, the permanent problem of the human race. Okay, now there's more, and why don't you read this other below? It's a little bit more... Uh, uh, this is this is some pr yes, the, the, the second the, in the, red. The, 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 the That's his words. The third paragraph. There is no country and no people, I think, who can look forward to the age of abundance without dread. But ultimately, when the accumulation of wealth is no longer of high social importance, there will be great changes in the code of moral morality. Your hand, but yes, that's morality. Or morals. We shall be able to assess the money motive at its true value. Okay, now these are... We have arrived. Yeah, well, we have maybe arrived at a good jubilee moment in terms of the evolution of universal consciousness 200,000 years ago. We're all African. We're all out of Africa yes, yes. 200,000 years ago. And uh, we've reached a point where through our extended capability, our, 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 uh, which is characteristic of our species, we can make tools. Yes. And we can make an environment different. We can make a home and put a furnace in it rather than ha hope to find a, uh, a cave, like a bear or something. We can change the environment. We've now reached a point with that capability where it's going exponential. And when you get Mr. Keynes correctly said, that if uh, you've got an algorithm that can do what 500,000 people would have had to do on an assembly line, mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to continue to have a world where all the wealth and all the income, all the wealth is going to be owned by one group of people, as those charts slowly demonstrate. It's actually all owned by uh, uh, 5%. 5% own all the capital instruments, the buildings, the capital instruments, the raw materials, the land, everything is owned by a tiny class of people in every political entity around the world they have been. And then everyone else is expected and only able to get a uh, income for them meeting their life's purposes by having a job on the estate where all the assets are owned by a tiny plutocratic class. People want to become part of that class. They got a chance to get yachts and Lear jets and all the rest of it. Um, but you haven't got that, and they, they could only get a, the, the labor through their labor. There's going to have to be a system in which there could be some ownership of capital instruments, the means by which production is done, automated systems, owner, the buildings, resources, an ownership within not just the government but also within the private sector, when you form capital, there's going to have to be ownership built into the people as a way of distributing income so that if for no other reason that the people will have the income to buy what automated systems can produce. That's the major problem confronting mankind. We do not have a solution to it here in the United States because all we're thinking about is, did you notice we had to bail out all the banks? They're getting richer. They're not investing here. They're not investing in the United States. They're not investing in that. And you're going to be confronted with the uh, lack of the need of, uh, of labor in the productive process. In Gaddafi's Libya, if you have a business, it has to be the ownership of, you could be stock. It could be a capitalist system, something that's going to lay us on with the inherited institutions. He set it up in a national order where it could be owned by people 
by the people who make up a, make up a business. If they start a business, you could not hire anybody. That's right. The labor. Mm -hmm. This idea of connecting it to labor. Now, mm -hmm. it's a big jump, but it's something that is being signaled. And he made a system out of whole cloth. He made a system that was able to relate to the future better than us who have all these institutions. We have all kinds of institutions and notions of, uh, that give legitimacy to our view of things. And so when the British came here, uh, we made a revolution against monarchy a thousand years after Rome in the, in the United States, the steam engine, industrial revolution coming. We made a revolution. They would come in and say, where are all your Azai's courts? Where are all your powdered wigs? Where are all your Versailles palaces for the royalty? And so the things they were used to as mm -hmm. symbols of their order that they represent the historical legitimacy for. Now we go to a place and they say, where are all your crooked bankers? Where are all your lobbyists for an industrial military complex that makes war on all the poor people of the world with an who will go out to kill them? And so where are all your, where's your crystal city? Where's your, you know what I'm saying? Where are all your uh, convoluted kind of things that are part of the system here that we're used to and that's necessary to have. You can't have a participatory democracy where people can be involved politically mm -hmm. and you can't have a system where people have income coming from the fact that they have an ownership stake and an ability to have ownership of capital instruments creating wealth mm -hmm. as a means of having income because it's revolutionary. That's right. Do you understand? So in an ideological sense. You got a bomb that away, Harold. That must be do you destroyed. Understand? Yes. No, but they would they would attack it ideologic, not mm -hmm. just because they got the power or not just because of imperialism or something mm -hmm. like that, which could be claimed, but also then you could hoodwink all of the materialistic dialectical materialistic people reading of the uh, historical condition of the human condition out of Karl Marx and so forth, because you've got a thing that could and that's a system that you could, and in the end, you're going to have to have a system, unless they're going to blow the whole thing up out of the frustration, unless they're going to, and they got weapon systems now that are species. They're legal. blowing it up, Harold. No, you think, no, they're species. They're blowing up Libya every day because they're blowing up trying Libya to blow it locally. up you think, But I'm yes. trying to get to a thing where historically, we reached a point. You can't stop an idea when it's time. It's right. No, not it's that. That's Margaret Mead, too, said only yes. a small group. But the thing is, the weapon systems have reached a point in our lifetime where they are so horrendous, and there's modeling for it, that if they were to be unleashed in a spasm of hatred, it would mean the end of the entire Homo sapien species. Now, some people say, no, that isn't the case because we've got SALT treaty and all that and everything. And we've got the weapons, so we're good and all of that. But it makes the United States of America with those hellish weapon systems they have backing into a corner. That's what's dangerous. Or their allies or a place like it could start off in a place like uh, Israel mm -hmm. where they've got a strong narrative and a weapon and, and turn that thing on. It wouldn't be rational, it would be mm. irrational. But the weapon systems at the level of capability are species lethal. That means there wouldn't be a single... Oh, no doubt about no, it. Most animal life would be gone. Well, a, a great deal of it would, mm -hmm. but certainly the Homo sapiens species. Now, we couldn't do that in the Second World War. We were trying. We were mm. impotent. We were gestating. Our practice session was Japan. Well, we dropped, we found it finally. It, yes, a practice session. Yeah. In order right. to try to threaten Russia, but it was a practice session. Well, the Russian dialect, remember, they were our allies, you know, they mm -hmm. were our allies until after the Second World War. Then they became the enemy du jour. And yes. it was the Soviets and that well, kind of Well, when thing. they didn't get scared, when Britain and America ran up in there, at, right in 45, trying right. to, to back it out, had to back back out. The threat was, uh, let me show you what we can do. And that drop in of that bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki was to let me show you what we could do. What they didn't know was that the Russians didn't need but, a, but, but themselves a short space and they would have it too. Mm -hmm. and, and they did, but then ideologically the Russians were against the institution of private property. Yes. They did not think, the collectivization, everything had to be mm -hmm. in the government. Then that end, it didn't work. 
Mm. Nomenclatura and all of that. It didn't work by doing that. So the America, we had a thing, George Cannon containment, we contained the Soviets, it imploded. So the challenge from the, uh, the full-blown Marxist-Leninist reading of economics and so forth didn't work. China got uh, co-opted in 72 and so forth and came on to the same kind of pattern, ours, that came from 1776. But the point being is the weapon systems have, it wasn't until apparently from modeling about 1970 that the weapon systems actually reached species lethality for our species. Mm. See, that's an existential new relationship in universe. Well, there are those who probably hold, as I look at it, who really believe if you walk out a good part of the population, maybe 80, 90 percent of the present population, a little more, that things would be all right. I'm sorry, I'm, I don't understand that what you to, just to, said. To, to destroy 80 to 90 percent of the present world's population. Yeah. That would be okay because there's that, that is what that's easy. where I believe that the wealthy are going. Well, they're now building shelters. Yeah, they're now building out in Midwest and so forth. Their old uh, thing for for themselves sure. to protect themselves and their own in a thing like that. But uh, the point being is that it's a new capability existentially. We we couldn't uh, we 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 was coming to an, uh, a new point. And also there are readings on the positive side that we have a technologically augmented capability of providing for everyone, everyone, because of a te with good design, mm -hmm. it's ecologically appropriate. The computer is a good example, but the, it's a long-term thing. We have very likely gotten to a point, and it was about the same time, Fuller and others showed it, that we had gotten to a point of there were more haves at the level of capability, you have to make a distinction, capability mm -hmm. in the actual historically mm -hmm. inherited reality and institutional structure. We had a capability, we could have, there were more haves than have-nots, you get a definition of that in terms of our capability. We had an incredible capability of providing for everybody. Mm -hmm. Qaddafi did, did it in 20 years, he got everybody owning their thing, their situation and everything. And so that's an equally You could take Uganda and feed the whole world. No, we could, we could liberate. It's a get-up moment. Yes. We're coming to the end of uh, scarcity. There's mm -hmm. not enough for one to win, the other has to win. You fight. You get a Gatling gun so you can go conquer and steal the other. Do you understand? We're coming to an end yes. point. And he may have had an image or an ideology that relates to that future in terms of getting ownership and forming capital in a way where it's owned by everybody. Con Edison should be owned by all the people that, serve, that are served by the electricity. We don't have that. We have a system that concentrates the ownership, and we're tied into that. Yes, of course. And we don't have an answer. He had an answer. Now, we just got a signal from the control room that we have a, a clip that we want to include. Yes, yes, sir. So maybe we should do that now. And yeah, and I believe that clip, uh, it's, it's, it's looking at black gold. Black gold, yeah, that's yes. a clip that she recommended. We're talking, I'm sorry, I'm, Rain, I'm trying to get a historical look at this. He may be somebody that should be celebrated. Well, I think he should be attacked. celebrated, Hal. Yeah, but I'm by saying, the progressive. But, but, the, but the evil two-headed snake. Hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, cannot have that. Well, okay, but that evil. So you got to destroy snake. anything uh -huh. that looks like it may produce life on this well, planet. Well, it may be the whole attack on Libya is nothing on more planet. than the old-fashioned liberal. Okay, here we go. Here's another yes. talk. Here's another tape. You can pipe it in here. They say it's about oil. The only reason they're interested in, with Libya is about the oil. Do you think we'd be in a rock if the major export there was broccoli? But some are convinced intervention in Libya is all about currency, specifically Gaddafi's plan to introduce the gold dinar, a single African currency made from gold, a true sharing of the wealth. It's one of these things that you have to plan almost in secret, because as soon as you say you're going to change over from the dollar to the something else, you are going to be targeted. There were two conferences on this, one in 96 uh, and another one in the year 2000, called the World Mataba Conference, organized by Gaddafi. And uh, everybody was interested, and I think most countries in Africa were keen. 
Gaddafi didn't give up. In the months leading up to the military intervention, he called on African and Muslim nations to join together to create this new currency that would rival the dollar and euro. They would sell oil and other resources around the world only for gold dinars. It's an idea that would shift the economic balance of the world. Countries' wealth would depend on how much gold they have, not how many dollars they trade. And Libya has 144 tonnes of gold. The UK has double that, but ten times the population. If Gaddafi uh, had an intent to try to uh, reprice his oil or whatever else the, uh, the country was uh, selling in the global markets and accept something else as a currency or maybe launch a gold in our currency, any move such as that would certainly not be welcomed by the power elite today who are responsible for controlling the world's central banks. So yes, that would certainly be something that would cause his immediate dismissal and the need for other reasons to, uh, to be brought forth for removing him from power. It's happened before. In 2000, Saddam Hussein announced Iraqi oil would be traded in euros, not dollars. Sanctions and an invasion followed. Some say because the Americans were desperate to prevent OPEC from transferring oil trading in all its member countries to the euro. A gold dinar would have had serious consequences for the world financial system, but may also have empowered the people of Africa, something black activists say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. The United States should welcome the self-determination of Africans. They certainly have denied self-determination to Africans inside the United States, so we're not surprised by anything that the United States would do to hinder self-determination of Africans on the continent. The UK's gold is kept here in a secure vault somewhere in the depths of the Bank of England. As in most developed countries, there's not enough to go around. But that's not the case in places like Libya and many of the Gulf states. A gold dinar would have given oil-rich African and Middle Eastern countries the power to turn around to their energy-hungry customers and say, sorry, the price has gone up and we want gold. Some say the US and its NATO allies literally couldn't afford to let that happen. Laura Emmett, RT, London. They have a lot of good stuff on Russian TV, yes. a counter to the uh, to counter the propaganda we're getting on American TV, CNN, and so forth. Yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah, Channel Zero. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But you know, uh, that's why that's why we keep talking about the idea of the John Maria, and this this, this whole thinking process that says you know you got all the things that we go after. We're now talking about a a gold standard, moving to a gold standard. We are also talking about at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, organizing Africans across the globe. Thank you very much. And uh, much of their sovereign funds, they've set up investment funds in yes, Africa. in Africa. And the people of Africa are in support of him because the people of Africa, so many of them, are of the least advantaged group. That most and of the them. least <laughs> advantaged group recognize yeah. him as somebody that represents them. Cesar Chavez, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know, Evo Morales in my Bolivia, where I lived for yes, two years. Yes. Uh, the people who've been least advantaged are in support of him. And that says something, particularly people like Mandela, mm -hmm. who count him the greatest person who helped break the back of apartheid. So that's just something progressives should start thinking about that and uh, weren't wondering about uh, why it is that we're bombing that country and so forth well, I mean, beyond the normal. Yeah, because it's, all, it's not about normal. I mean, I've, I've said it all along, I continue to say that it's about the idea of the John Maria. Thank you. It's about the whole concept of, of, of having put in place uh, all of these aggressive programs that we say we want to put in place in the U.S., he's put them in place. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they're stumbling along because it's young. Uh, but it's also about organizing Africans up outside of the continent of Africa. Mm -hmm. And finally, and more importantly, mm -hmm. when we go to talking about organizing investment banks, we talk, we're talking about satellites and mm -hmm. Africa building from within. Africa has nothing but resources. Mm -hmm. they, they, they could it's feed in terms the world. Of this, you know, Sudan raw could feed the resource. world. Yes, raw yeah. resources. Mm -hmm. Um, when you go to talk about them, that being turned inward and people begin to build from inside, mm -hmm. uh, you, the West can't afford that. The West cannot afford to allow 
Africa to develop, not just because it's told a lie mm -hmm. that Africans uh, literally, without the common sense, mm -hmm. yeah. the credible common sense right. to develop Africa, uh -huh. but because it will then mean that we have to have a new way of living on the planet, a new mm -hmm. way of talking about how we negotiate things, a new way of uh, maneuvering. And so the West won't be able to do the things that it used to do. So that is the wealthy in the West. Now for the rest of us in the West, it will not be, it will be an opening up. Mm -hmm. I yeah. began to share because mm -hmm. we're not talking to Af most Africans who, the 300 and some million Africans that live in the Western world are going to stay in the Western world more, more than likely. Most of us are not at any point going to go home in mass, mm -hmm. and not because it's impossible. I think it's possible, but because it doesn't make a lot of sense. Right, right. It'll put right. a heavy burden on Africa and on us to have to, to make that kind of a move. Mm. That's true also for most of those people who are in Europe, and certainly not those in Asia. There are more Africans in Asia than there are in Africa. So when we begin to talk about looking at those outside, it's an advantage to all of us because then we begin. Africa can begin to put pressure on our corrupt racist regimes and say, hey, look, you got to do for our people because you got to deal with us. Mm -hmm. Right mm -hmm. now, there's no, yeah. way, no way of doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to empower the least empowered. That's right. Yeah, so that's right. The, the least empowered then will begin to do what Qaddafi is asking. You know, if you can't feed, if you can't find jobs for house, feed, and clothes the, and end the racism in Europe, mm -hmm. then for God's sake, you have to destroy Africa over a period of 600 years uh, return them home and help us to make a livable life for these people in Africa. Yeah. These are the recent migrants that are going out to Europe. Yeah, it's terrible what's but going on. But in the meanwhile, for those really in the United true. States and Brazil and other places, uh, let us talk about making a livable wage and a decent living well, and ending the racism and having these people to enjoy the governments in which they reside. Well, in all due respect, you're saying to get it, it, that's probably good. You got a living wage. No, it, yeah. the limiting the wage. Yes. Or the idea that we're going to have to have a system, let's say progressive people say, <coughs> you have to have a living wage and you have to get your income by having a wage or having a job that's well and good, and it's something that it, we have to, it's so ingrained in the society that people will still have their roles in order to get income by their job. But the tr truth of the matter is that the trend of the world is for, to follow Lord Keynes, mm -hmm. is to be, uh, uh, or even Henry George, if you go back to saying the resources should be owned by the people. The, the, the idea that you can allow all the capital to be owned by a small group of people and to be run by bankers who have yachts and Learjets and billions and, and, and those figures that we showed, the idea that the progressive community can afford to just ignore the idea that ownership, uh, private property, the institution of private property, people on the left would say it's evil. Is an evil thing because it creates inequity. You get people living on big houses. And How do you understand terror? Uh, uh, well, yeah, I do, I think. The yeah. progressive community in the United States, along with everybody else, is so damn terrorized. Terrorized. That okay. we may not be able to, for one group, to mm -hmm. continue with the standard of living they've had, mm -hmm. and for the other group, mm -hmm. that our poverty yeah, they're, they're, they're frightened. Well, they have what they call gated communities. Yes, The people course. that have some income, they get nice places where they can live, and they have gated communities yes. so people can't get Caged in, in. And protect them. They Cage get, yourself in. There ought to be a good market in castle keeps. There used to be castles that protect against, because it's been a history of inequity and I scarcity. Yes. In order for good some memory. in order for some to have a good food and good living and all that, others had to suffer. You had to take it because there wasn't enough. We may be coming to a point where we're transcending scarcity at the level of capability. There is enough for all and the ecology and we can have a system that will be liberating of the whole system. Not having it be, some people can be rich and comfortable yes. in their gated community. Everybody. We have that capability, which is the reverse side. At the level of capability, <coughs> to the destructive capability of yeah. the weapon system, that can now wipe us all out. It's an existential new reality. We need something 
Uh, but I think we know that. But we know that. Well, the I don't know that we hold, know it well enough. I, I think we're frightened of that. I think that the terror in the United States <coughs> is clear. The examples, example after example, from the Wall Street <coughs> fiasco, mm -hmm. where people's pension funds and everything's closed down, your 501, whatever, mm -hmm. is closed down. And we begin to look at that. That is terror. I had a friend, I was sitting talking with her. She and I both were teaching up at the university, and we were co-sharing a course in women's studies, um, mm -hmm. a collective, um, co women's studies collective. And this particular sister had, was well in doubt. She was a Harvard graduate in yeah. biology and da-da-da. She mm -hmm. had well endowed herself with her pension. And she woke up and got a phone call. She didn't have anything there anymore. Now this was in a the, pension fund. Yeah, it was yeah. the 1980s. Yeah, yeah. Everything okay, was yeah. gone. Right, right, right. And I looked at her as I sat there and looked at her. She was devastated. Too devastated to cry. Right, right. right. I had a brother at the university who just said to me, "You know, most of my pension fund got wiped out." And this is <coughs> the late 90s. Mm -hmm. All mm -hmm. right. So, and then you come into this period where they're just mass wipeout. But this morning I'm living in my house. I think I'm fairly safe. I'm a, I am work for Wall Street, I make 600000 plus a year, mm. and now I don't have a job. And okay. I'm a million point three strong. Uh -huh. There's 1.3 million of us who don't have jobs. Uh -huh. Hell, yeah. that is terror. It's terror that, at the level where we, we can't, but we poor folk can't see because these are people who have had a life of relative comfort, yeah. who thought things were stable, yeah. who thought this was forever, and now you're laid back hoping that well, your that wife can make... Well, that makes me very nervous, because they represent the leading edge of the geopolitically organized and, and socially politically organized. That's right. And they've got weapon systems at their behest. They're the ones who have the black box. They're the ones who can set it off. They're the ones who can push claims beyond any reasonable doubt. Could be in Israel, could be other places where there's injustice, and set off an... Uh, an, a, a, an ir totally irrational unleashing of the weapons of destruction of the entire species. Well, they've been threatening now, to do it hell now. No matter how hard time. somebody might have wanted to do that, Genghis Khan on the step or something, yes. could not wipe out this. Yes. There's a new, ex what I'm trying to get to, a new level, a new existential reality and universe characteristic of this time. We can read all of history. We can yes, do that. Of course, and no we doubt. can see it on two courses. But just we, think about it from most people sitting back. If you have been well-educated, Harold, mm. you know they have those things. I beg your pardon? And, 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 and right now, just as a, as a people. What are, know, you talk, are you talking on two I'm levels? I'm talking about the intellectuals who yeah. know that we know they have these, these weapons. Right? Oh. I'm not saying the poor don't know. The poor do, too, in America. Yeah. Um, well, it's there's something always the mm. fear deep within, the terror, mm -hmm. that says these fools might set that stuff off. Yeah, yeah. Or if they get backed into a corner. And that keeps If they you get backed into a corner. Yeah, that, that's or a, if they do something that is really crazy because something is, you know, they're closing in on them. That's what's dangerous. That's what's dangerous about Israel. They just might set off AIDS or some yeah. other disease. Or something else, yeah, yeah. You see, they have all right. kinds of weapons. Right. Here. And, and I so would rather this be, but the point being, the terror, if I could. I hear what you're saying. I hear. Yes. No, but that's characteristic of the birth process. You're coming to the end of the birth canal and you're going to come into a new way of being. We're coming into a new way of being in universe if we make it. But it's not your history like you can live 10,000 generations. I tell you, I got my DNA done. Yes, yes. Yeah, 60,000 <laughs> years ago, my ancestor was in Ethiopia. Yes, I, yes, We're yes. all Africans. We'll all go back to yes, Africa. Yes, Everybody's yes, African. Yes, yes, yes. But anyway, the point being is we need something that, we, uh, who was it? I forget who it was. Nietzsche, I think, said, the future affects the present as much as the past. We're all reified to outdated institutions. That's correct. In terms of what the future allows. It may allow liberation, justice. We've never had justice. But have we ever had justice? No, we haven't. No, it's but always been the strong. The block to that, Harold, the block to that is exactly the, the, this little small group. Mm -hmm. They can't afford to have us liberated. Uh, well, I, you got to give up your airplanes, your condominiums. And wait a minute, I'm not at all sure. Or wells or whatever. Well, okay, I'm wondering. I'm trying to get to it. It's really hard because people are so caught up in the immediate. The idea, the metaphor of the destruction of the entire species is one. To get the point made that this is not normal time. The other is we may very well have at the level of capability and with good design and with good technology transcended 
scarcity. There is enough overwhelmingly for everybody and all of the ecology, something that we're not historically accustomed to. We can't understand that we're going to come into a world where there is justice. You can't imagine a world of justice when there's never been justice. It's just been the strong ruling over the you weak. You have to die and go to heaven first. Half. Yeah, that's what the religions do. <laughs> yes, that's what But I'm this saying. is in a realistic sense. Then you're going to need systems that relate to that technology, and you're going to have to have some way of people tied into that other than slavery, wage slavery, in terms of the capital assets that embodies it. You need to have a new way. But like the, the, the rulers can't afford the new way. No, what I'm saying you keep you saying that, but it's not them. I don't even blame the bankers. I don't blame the politicians or anything like that. I blame the intellectuals. The intellectuals are not giving a critique that is comprehensive enough to take the measure of the times in which we live that can be dealing with the situation because they're all specialized out and cannot think about the whole. There's no systems thinking. The intellectuals are terrorized and they're not organizers. Well, that's we right. We need a people who are going to get out and awake the masses. Hell, you are well, doing that. Well, what are you going to awake the masses to? You know, no, what you're you talking do. about, uh, we, you, you just went through it, right? No. This capabilities we have of going to this place will be beyond scarcity. Yeah, it's like, it, it, if I may, to go to, they had Lynn Margulis on today. There's a great biologist in there, in, 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 or, or Stephen Jay Gould, mm -hmm. or, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, you have education. 99.9% .9 of all species that have ever existed in this universe, and this universe may be within a parallel mm -hmm. universe with others in uh, string theory and so forth in physics, 99.9% of all species that have ever existed have gone extinct. Okay? They go extinct. Now, mm -hmm. We may be going to go extinct, or what we're doing, we're coming to at the birth, women, maybe they understand. You get to a point where there's a fallopian, and then there's the, you know, the womb, and then there's a birth, kind of, and then there's a point where you get to a certain point, the steady state, you're in a certain state for a long time, a steady state, and then you come to the birth, and then, boom, there's the new appears. Mm -hmm. We're at that point. We're coming to the end of the human society, the, humans, the human order in the universe. We are going to either get a system that is going to be liberating. Of, can you imagine a liberated world where there's justice, universal justice for everybody, and everybody, can, for it. and everybody can realize their own full potential in a way of association with that is, that is Can a, you imagine such a world as possible? Of course. Okay, is it possible that it's in our grasp? Yes, it is. And there's something in the way, and it's all the reified, outdated institutions like we've got to go bomb and kill people in Libya because they got a way of associating the economic system and the political system to the future, which we are all caught up and outdated as much as the feudal systems of Europe were outdated when they confronted the United States of America, came and bombed them. For 30 years after, uh, 40 That's years. That's because we are not associated. We don't problems. associate Libya's bombing with what's happening to ourselves. No, I'm saying they went and bombed Libya 40 years after they did. They got, they got, they had a system that was really relevant to the future, including the way we're going to form capital. But, but my point is, and we is don't have America it. sit up here and we we don't see that the the, the increase in poverty, the destruction of of, of, of the economy the homelessness and despair, we don't connect, and, and also the oppressions that are coming, all kinds yeah. of oppressions. Mm. We don't connect that to the bombing of Libya. Okay, They're now, bombing well, us. I think it would be a good idea to do that. And then one last thing, and in terms of that, if we're coming, to, that's the only thing worth considering these days, that we're in that quarter of time, in terms of time yes. and evolution. And what we need to have is a system that can be liberating of the poor, suffering humanity liberating of the sur and the ecology and through good design we have to have that and it has to be a system that's so appropriate and it's going to have to go through the hole and infuse and subsume the whole it's going to have to be intentional integrity that goes through the whole and makes the whole like gaia as one really a uh, fully developed system and something well, that's a now, prophet, let me hell. <laughs> now wait a minute let me finish that's what's required and when we get to that point, there will be, and then there is the new. It's called punctuated equilibrium.
It's pe and there will be a liberated order, be a residency mm -hmm. of a liberated humanity and an ecological system that will inter to the universe at a level transcendent of Homo sapien species evolutionary past. There will be a new liberated order in the universe. And we're at that point. We're about to leave the womb. And we have no vision of how we're going to realize that. And that, to make the bridges to where we can realize that kind of an order and give that synergistic possibility a chance how, is the major problem confronting us. And Libya is relevant to that. Yeah, how, I, 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 I do believe. I, I firmly believe. You know, I started out as a child in a very racist yeah. society. It's not, yeah. still racist. Right. But those um, little symbols of subordination have been taken down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I awakened, yeah. I'm beginning to awaken to a new, to a new reality. Yeah. But when I was a child, yeah. in my early 20s, fighting that thing, I didn't know that it could happen. I just knew I had to fight it. You're right, you are, yeah. I do believe that the words of the great prophet, 2650 BC, mm -hmm. who talked about an hour like this, his name is Nefer Rohu, who talked about an hour like this, he talked about a process, but he said, I'm not a prophet. I'm talking about a process. Yeah. That across time, all of this destruction would take place, down to the water being poisoned, mm. so that the fish died in the oceans and seas, yeah. down to the air mm -hmm. being poisoned, and mm -hmm. the winds sound like some kind of atomic weapon mm -hmm. prevailing against each other, mm -hmm. down to the sun up there. Mm being so powerful that mm. we couldn't even look at it, that it would blind us. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So the stripping away of the ozone. All of yeah. these little images that he didn't have any words for. Yeah, yeah. But he said something that's very important. He said, in that hour when the Nile is, becomes a bank and you can walk across it on foot. Because mm. he didn't have any words for a dam. Yeah, right, 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 right. right. We're in that hour. We've been yeah. in that hour since 52. So what I'm saying to you is that what's 52? 1952 yeah, is when, when the, the dam is, is when the dam is finished. Okay, yes. yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah. what I'm saying to you yeah. is that that vision that he had was not about somebody the earth being destroyed and us going off to heaven someplace, and then the New Jerusalem kind of thing. He's very clear that it's going to happen here. That yes, we're going to fight it out. There will be a struggle, Here on but Earth. we right on Earth, yeah. and we will have what we talk about is a new heaven and a new Earth. Uh -huh. We'll have it, but we'll have it here. Well, and it uh, may not be in your in my lifetime. Oh, I think it's the, due. I uh, think it's imminent. I think I, it's I, imminent. I, we can't it's, put it off uh, in the, thousand the, the, the years. The thing is coming right now. No, no, the, that's what. I, when, that's what I'm saying. No, what I'm saying to you human is being. that we're standing on that that precipice that you talk about. That's at right. This exact moment. And a pregnancy has a time of its own, doesn't it? And but, it comes yeah, but the we're at that but, time. But the birth is a we're, rabbit No, we're at that experience. time. <laughs> we're suffering yes. labor pains. Yes. Maybe we'll know about That's that. right, brother. But they we're getting there. And the th really trick is you're going to have to have a thing liberating of the poor suffering humanity has not been able to realize its potential and the ecology. And the biggest trick is to have something that goes through the hole and can be understood by those responsible for the outdated institutions. Our president is falling short short of that intellectual responsibility and our leadership. They're not understanding the need for an alternative that Mr. Gaddafi has brought to us, and it should be appreciated by intellectuals and supported, as Cynthia McKinney is beginning to I'm in full agreement with you. What has happened, though, is that our president and all of these presidents of these European and African and wherever nations that have stood in this negativity against humanity have created an opposite thing now. Mm -hmm. And that is the world is waking up. Well, let's hope so. We got the, the end of the hour. The world is waking up. Okay, we got to say goodbye. Thanks, my love. <laughs> it's so good to see you. Happy Always to good. Uh, Always good to be with you. Time, all kinds of nine. We got to get a teaching going about trying to bring about uh, uh, first to concentrate on that country and get the president out of his swoon, if possible. No, no, we got to get this president and, out of uh, office and, and, and begin okay, to get a Cynthia okay. McKinney type some, in the office yeah, or somebody of that quality. God bless Cynthia McKinney. Thanks yes. for viewing. We're coming back uh, tomorrow, so tune in. Thanks a lot, Coley. So good to see you. I want you yeah. to get home and get careful. You got a little bit of a cold you want to get. Take. Yeah. Okay, thanks for viewing. We'll come back tomorrow. Okay, it's, uh, we're out of uh, time now, so we got.